Hey, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, Jay, just Jay, your resident troublemaker, your resident culture warrior. I hope you are all doing well on this beautiful Saturday morning, although it's not beautiful where I am. It's kind of overcast and rainy and kind of craptacular out, but I hope it is better where you guys are, um, you beautiful bastards. All right, so <laughs> let's get right into this. I knew this was going to happen. I- I'm sure you guys did too. It was just a matter of time. We, we all saw, saw the writing on the wall. Do you remember when the, the Disney Star Wars films were out and this phenomenon, phenomenon, sorry, it's been one of those mornings, this phenomenon of the Raylo happened um, and how over the top and weird that sh- stuff got. Um, and basically, for those who may not have been aware, the Raylo was these people who felt that the characters of Ray, who was the lead female character in the Disney Star Wars uh, sequels, and Kylo Ren, who was the bad guy, played by uh, Adam Driver. Um, they, they wanted them to get together and have this relationship. So hence, Ray Low, combination of both their names. Um, they were, were being shipped, basically. Um, the, the fans were sort of putting them into this relationship. Well... That went over like like a fart in church with a lot of uh, with a lot of fans. I mean, the Raylos were hardcore. I'll give them that. I, I remember watching uh, other channels and them talking about the Raylos, and the Raylos had no problem coming after them. Well, I think the Raylos have moved on now, and unfortunately for us and Tolkien fans around the world, I think Raylos have decided to land strictly on the Rings of Power. Okay, you knew it. I knew it was coming. We all knew it was coming. It was just a matter of time. We were, we were hoping. We were hoping, you know, much like Gandalf, hoping that that ring that Bilbo gave to Frodo isn't the one. Um, we were hoping against hope, but I've gone to, to Minas Tirith and I've looked in the archives and checked out the scrolls. And yes, it is true. Um, they are coming for Tolkien's work. Okay, you ready? I found this article today. And this article is coming to us from, of all places, surprise, surprise, the Mary Sue. All right. So let's get right into it. Hot Sauron from Rings of Power has taken over the internet. Quote, and in the darkness bind them. Unquote. If you know, you know. Okay. All right. This ought to be fun. One does not simply thirst into Mordor. Have you heard the word about Hot Sauron on Rings of Power and how everyone is shipping him and, well, you'll see. While other fandoms fight over whether it's appropriate to like a villain, Trop, the Rings of Power, fans are quietly falling for one of literature's biggest baddies. Spoilers for the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power ahead, definitely for season one and perhaps for some upcoming seasons as well. Sauron's hotness is canon. While the series has condensed the canon and events in Middle-earth history as presented in J.R.R. Tolkien's books, stories, and appendices, one thing we know is this. Sauron was a hottie. Okay? This is something that even the most rigid Tolkien fans cannot deny. In Tolkien's biblical Middle-earth text, The Silmarillion, at the start of a chapter titled, titled, quote, Of the Rings of Power in the Third Age, unquote, Tolkien says, When Thangoradrim was broken and Morgoth overthrown, Sauron put on his fair hue again and did obeisance to Ianwe, the herald of Manwe, and abjured all his evil deeds, and some hold that this was not at first falsely done, but that Sauron in truth repented, if only out of fear. I know this chapter says Third Age, but I believe that passage describes events in the Second Age that lead up to it. Why? That that makes no fucking sense. You're literally like, well, I know Tolkien specifically laid this out in the Third Age, but, you know, I'm just going to apply it to whatever the hell I want because, you know... I can. The appendices to the Silmarillion also specify that Anatar, the name that Sauron uses when he is the Lord of Gifts, and the titular Rings of Power are in production, took a fair form. 
The good looks are only temporary, however. When Numenor ultimately falls and Sauron creates the One Ring, the Silmarillion notes, in the mists of the lands of Mordor. Mordor. You gotta get that R roll. <laughs> Sauron has fashioned the ruling ring. There now he brooded in the dark until he had wrought for himself a new shape, and it was terrible, for his fair semblance had departed forever when he was cast into the abyss at the drowning of Numenor. The execution from page to screen was still a surprise. So we knew that Sauron would be easy on the eyes in the rings of power. He's not supposed to be easy on the eyes. Like Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb, he's not supposed to be easy on the eyes, you sexist piece of crap. In the rings of power, and we knew that he would be seductive in some kind of way. That's how he gained the trusts of the elves, dwarves, and men before stabbing them all in the proverbial back with the one ring. That said, I don't know about y'all, but I assume that Anatar, or whatever he calls himself, would be one for the Legolas girlies, a.k.a. hot in an elven way. I didn't expect him to be hot in a rugged, unwashed Aragorn way. R.I.P. me, I guess. And then you see a tweet, you know, what do you think of the darkness with Charlie Vickers? Um, enter Hal Brand, played by Australian actor Charlie Vickers, who we now know was, sing it with me, Sauron all along, oh boy. Handsome and sad and dark and smirking up a tempest. Galadriel meets him on a raft in the sea. She's on a quest to find and defeat Sauron after he murdered her brother in service to Morgoth, the big bad before him, and ends up not only befriending him, but clearing a path for his return. Oops. Shortly after they meet, Galadriel makes a costly assumption and projects a backstory onto him that is immensely appealing to both her and to fans. A reluctant hero, an heir to the Southlands, an exiled king just like Aragorn, right? Wrong. Halbrand will technically rule over the Southlands, but only because the area of Middle-earth is destined to become Mordor. Still, the hero's journey, that gal, apparently that's the new thing, her, we're not calling her Galadriel, we're just calling her gal, and unsuspecting viewers were sold on had us looking at Halbrand and the things he did in a particular way. Sauron has been malip- manipulating Galadriel, but is also at a crossroads. One of Tolkien's letters that likely inspired Vickers' take on the character states that, quote, When Morgoth was defeated by the Valar, finally, Sauron forsook his allegiance. But out of fear only, he did not present himself to the Valar or sue for pardon. He remained in Middle-earth. When he found how greatly his knowledge was admired by all other rational creatures and how easy it was to influence, I'm assuming they meant them, he became prideful. Technically, the Rings of Power cannot directly adapt the Silmarillion for legal reasons, so these letters are actually important, because uh, apparently they wouldn't have been if, if Amazon had the rights, you know, the other stuff, never mind, you, you know what I mean. Um, Vickers also alluded to using Tolkien's letters as inspiration in a San Diego Comic-Con interview with Screen Junkies prior to the big Sauron reveal. Uh, The passage alludes to Sauron making an attempt at a normal life and maybe even feeling some private remorse before ultimately going down the path to becoming not just Morgoth's servant, but his second coming. That makes him complicated, and complicated characters are very, very, very hot, especially when they're tempted by a dark side. Swooning over a hot villain is not exactly a new concept. Anakin Skywalker, Kylo Ren, Loki, Killmonger, Draco, Harley Quinn, the Darkling, the Goblin King, Regina Mills. Need I go on? We know they're bad, but they're not real. We don't owe fictional heroes our loyalty. They can't see us. In fact, we can even cheer for the hero while being attracted to the villain. Fans contain multitudes. As long as you don't bully others for not sharing your opinions or headcanons or start using fictional characters to justify your actions or the actions of abusers IRL, it's chill. Stories, especially in fantasy and science fiction, help us work through our fears, anxieties, and dreams in a safe space. And then you see some more tweets. Um, If evil, why pretty? If evil, why hot? Sauron is here, and he is hot as hell. Ha ha ha. 
Rings of Power raises the important question we must all ask ourselves. What if you wanted to give Sauron a little kiss? Oh. He even survived a shower, which I know sounds wrong, but fans were not happy when Greaseball Aragon got a wash and a blowout in Return of the King. Think Steve Rogers shaving in Endgame, but so bad it had us rooting against basic hygiene. And another tweet. I can't believe this is Sauron. What the fuck? <laughs> we know he's the villain, even though he might not necessarily realize it. And then you see this three, this tweet. Does Halbrand know he is Sauron? At Lamau. Episode 8, be like, damn, I forgot I was the villain. If you were less familiar with Hot Sauron as a concept before the, Rings of Pow- before the Rings of Power, this might make you look at Peter Jackson films in a whole new light. It had to be said. And Okay, and then you see the tweet there. Okay, this one's kind of a, a little bit annoying. The absolute lack of any kind of passion in this image. Okay, and then, then you see the picture of Galadriel and uh, Celeborn from um, the Peter Jackson films. Okay, and then they go and meme it. What has really pushed Halbrand, a.k.a. Sauron, thirst over the edge, however, excuse me, is shipping him with Galadriel, played on the Rings of Power by Morfred Clark. The two of them flirted in that intense but chaste way we expect from Lord of the Rings, and he basically asked her to be his queen in the finale. There was arm touching. There was staring. Is it wrong? Absolutely. There are dozens of red flags. He's the once and, future, once and future Dark Lord. He becomes the embodiment of evil. Galadriel is also married, though in season one she believes herself to be a widow. A widow, I ask you this, and... Okay, so apparently the concept of, hey, I'm married, I probably shouldn't be like, you know, you know, thirsting after this guy I just met it is a foreign concept here. Apparently it's just like, dude hot, it's okay. We know for a fact that this ship's, ship is not the end game. But that doesn't mean we can't have a little fun, appreciate ti- the time they had, or maybe hop over to an AU in the meantime. Galadriel can have fun too. Strong, confident, zealous, smart female characters like Guy Ladriel in the Rings of Power are boring as Entmoots if they aren't allowed to make mistakes. You know what I mean? Bring on the shipping manifestos, fic, Tumblr posts, gift sets, and many fan cams set to Taylor Swift songs. Oh, okay, a couple more tweets. Let me be abundantly clear. I want someone to look at me like this. I do not want to be deceived by the Dark Lord and under the control of the one ring he made behind my back and won't even let me wear in our engagement photos. That, that this is projecting. I don't actually want to see Galadriel to become a dark elf queen at Sauron's side, but I want to see her think about it and wrestle with her feelings and or Halbrand. When Celeborn, Celeborn returns, I want him to be part of a love triangle. Triangle. There's a difference. Are you fucking shitting me? Like, clearly, you have no concept of, of the written work. Okay, and how this screws things up. Okay, too grossed out by the inevitable flaming eyeball of it all to be attracted to Sauron. That's your prerogative. To be fair, there are a lot of hotties in the Rings of Power, but hot Sauron isn't in competition with hot Elrond, Gilgadaddy, or Elendilf. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, I love them all. The more, the merrier. I'll just be over here with the other dark and twisted devotees. Okay, and who's the uh, the author of this uh, this article? Oh, uh, Leah Marilla Thomas. Okay, um, Leah Marilla Thomas. I just want to make sure I got that right. I don't want to, you know. Yes, Leah Marilla Thomas. All right. Um, hey. Leah, just a couple of things. Uh, the reason why your concept of Hot Sauron and Guy Ladriel and Celeborn being in this love triangle um, is idiotic at best and just like your own, like, you know, personal sexual fantasies at, at, wor- at worst. Um, because you would undercut another, quote-unquote, strong female character. So it's interesting how... An uninformed, 
um, uneducated on the subject, or let's just say it, ignorant on the subject writer for the Mary Sue would say something like this, not realizing how it undercuts literally one of the first and best portrayals of a strong independent woman in the Lord of the Rings. And what I mean by that is Arwen in the Peter Jackson adaptation of the films. Um, because, um, Leah, Galadriel and Celeborn have a daughter, okay? Technically, during when, this, when the Rings of Power is taking place, they should have a daughter. Not only should Celeborn be there, but they have a daughter, Celebrian, Okay. Celebrian goes on to marry Elrond, okay? And they, in turn, have a couple of children, their daughter being Arwen, who goes on to marry Aragorn, okay? Now, in the books, Arwen has less of a role to play in, in The Lord of the Rings than she does in the films, okay? Okay. Um, and they specifically took some of Glorfindel's stuff and gave it to Arwen in the films because they wanted to to sort of give her more of a, a presence in it. In the books, she's she's barely there, um, but but she is there, but barely. Um, but she's sort of you know the 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 young warrior elf in the film in Peter Jackson's films that they tried to make Galadriel into. In, in this series. Um, so, but taking your logic, um, if Galadriel is in this sort of love triangle with with um, Sauron and Celeborn, it sort of throws a wrench in that whole concept of, of there being Celebrian and so on and so forth. I, again, they've already screwed the pooch on this one because Celeborn should be there. But again, we all know what's wrong lore-wise with this show, okay? Okay. But I just find it interesting that, you know, it's this this article speaks to a lot because one, it speaks to people who are uninformed about Tolkien's work making assumptions. They try to reference some letters and pull some quotes that I'm sure they just Googled. They don't have them in context, um, but that's not going to be good enough. Um, the overall message here is just like he's a hot guy. He may be evil, but, you know, sometimes hot trumps evil. That's what I'm taking from this. Um, which I find interesting because I think if there was somebody who wrote an article about, you know, hot Galadriel and how she looked good, you know, with her, her see-through outfit on when it was wet on the raft and stuff, you would hear a whole, whole shitstorm about the misogyny and sexism contained in that article. But here we are talking about thirsting after a bad guy because he's hot. So basically it is okay for this misandry of a woman to say, you know what, he could be evil, doesn't matter. There could be red flags, doesn't matter. He's hot. I want to fantasize about him because he's hot. I want to write articles about how hot he is and why it's okay to fantasize about him. Um, so I just, I, I find the double standard there interesting, um, coming from the Mary Sue, but again, not surprised. Also, not surprised that we would see this. These are a lot of the same people that were the Raylos um, with the the sequel trilogy of Star Wars are now, you know, what a Galbrand, you know, is that what we're going to go with? Galbrand? Uh, maybe you heard it here first. Um, we're shipping Galbrand. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think this is just like, OK, here comes the stupid, you know, or or. You know, are are you on board? For any of you ladies out there watching this, are are you all about the hot Sauron? Um, or does the fact that he's like, you know, the second most evil being in all of existence in Tolkien's work kind of like put the kibosh on, on the feels, if you know what I mean? Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think down below, people. Um, do you think I could do a video about, oh, my God, you know, hot Galadriel? in her her wet see-through t-shirt oh my god look at that raft and get away with it because my money's on mm, no i'd be called out as being kind of creepy um and you'd be right I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that um but yeah let me know what you think down in the comments below if you like the video please give the video a like if you feel like sharing it go right ahead and do so um if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button give me a subscribe it helps the channel grow it helps us get seen out there there's been a couple of instances where i was the first one making videos on some stories and it sort of got buried in the mix and then a day or two later i'd see everybody else doing it and it's just kind of like i know that's a numbers thing with youtube so you know don't anybody misinterpret that as me 
bitching about other channels. I'm not. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. If you have, thank you very much. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. Until then, peace.